Yeah. Oh, this feels good. Oh, sorry, wait a minute. Okay, there. Thank you. Okay, let's get closer. I want you to be in a shape. That is why I pushed that up. man to move. Oh. <laughs> This is the only comfortable place. Yeah, yeah we can start the tour now. So, my name is Kofi Tete. I am the tour guy. We are doing a walking tour. Some have been before, so you know it's a walking tour. And it's about one hour. It's, it's a long walk. So, after a brief introduction, we we'll go straight to this dungeon to see where British kept about thousand enslaved Africans. <laughs> we'll come out to the yard and talk about some graves. Then move on to the female dungeons. Then to the door of no return. However, I promise you wonderful people, today we are all going to return yes. peacefully. But it is a year of return. If we do that, we will visit the condemned cell. And if God willing, we survive the condemnation and still have some strength in the time. Yeah. Now we shall go upstairs briefly to see the residence of British people. Yeah. 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 And on the tour, you can take pictures. Mm -hmm. You can ask questions. Comment are quite welcome. But let me say that we are going to talk about the transatlantic slave trade. Mm -hmm. And the story <coughs> is very, very sad and emotional. Oh. So those of you who today is your first time, <coughs> psychologically, <coughs> you have to be strong. Now, this is historic Cape Coast Castle, but the word Cape Coast itself, it is a corrupted Portuguese word, mm. the word Cabo Corso, which means short cape. That was corrupted into Cape Coast by the British people. And this structure we have here is the youngest and the last castle in this country. We have three castles in Ghana and several of the forts along the coast that were built by Europeans. And almost all of them were used for trans-Atlantic slave trade. Can you, can you move into the shade, Daddy? Can you come to where the sh in the shade here? The sun is too hot for me. So I, yes, be in the shade, I like that. But the first one is the one that Elmina built around 1482 by Portuguese. There's one in Accra that was built around 1661 by this one, Denmark. This one was built by the British in 1665. So if you look at the ages, this is the youngest. And this one was built at the time, slave trade that we are coming to talk about today, started in Africa for close to 200 years already. And it was at eight peak. Because slavery started at the first castle, Elmina, another one. It was during the 1500s, when in the history of the whole world, there was this man called Christopher Columbus. He said he discovered the Americas. So when he said so, the Spanish moved from Europe to those places and they established their plantations where they needed labor to work. So they tried to use the local people, called the Native Americans, or the Red Indians, or the Cherokees to work for them. But according to the same Europeans, they said those people were not strong, and they were dying from diseases. So there was a Catholic bishop, his name was Bartolomeo de las Casas. He suggested to the Spanish to look for alternative sources of labor to replace the Native Americans. And what I've noticed, even before the start of the trans-Atlantic slave trade, the Europeans came to build these castles, like this along the coast of West Africa. There was what we call the trans-Saharan trade, which the Arabs took some blacks through the Saharan desert to Europe. So some of those people were taken from Europe, especially from Spain and Lisbon to the Americas, and they tried them, and they proved to be physically strong. So at first, Europeans were taking Africans from Europe to their farm to work for them in the Americas. But with time, the Africans, they got finished. But they were not all that many. So they had to come back to the land of Africa again to take our people to their farms. Now at the time, Portuguese built Elmina Castle, which is not far from here. Portuguese came to Elmina in search of gold, because this country was once called Gold Coast. So the gold brought the white people. They would tell you they came to spread Christianity. But mm. it is never true. Yeah, they never came because of our resources. So Portuguese who are in search of gold were given a license 
they call it ASEAN to, to legally transport Africa from Amina to the New World. So West Africa, Portuguese started this thing. They stayed there for about 150 years, buying and selling our people. The Dutch attacked them. It happened in 1637. So Dutch were there for about 50 years before British came here. And when British came here, Dutch were at Elmina, occupied this land. So British fought the Dutch people. 1664, they defeated them. And that 1664 was the year a state in America called New York, then New Amsterdam, mm -hmm. also changed us from Dutch mm -hmm. to British. The same year, British got this land from the Dutch. When the British got the land, they started building the castle. They built it in stages. It went through addition, demolition before they got this whole structure. And then when they built it, this dungeons alone could hold about 1,300 enslaved Africans at one particular time. Men were here, 1,000. Women were there, 300. They kept the minimum two weeks, maximum three months. All depends on the ships. But 1807, British came out with a law so they stop slave trade. And that was led by one William Weberforce. 1814, mm -hmm. Dutch also did the same thing. But from that time to 1860, Africa, slavery did not stop. It continued for over 40 years. So they called that one illegal. So 1860, the whole thing stopped. So this structure was used as a colonial administrative center. And the British control the building to the time we gained our independence. Then we moved the British out of the castle. So the castle, as at now, it is 354 years old, from 1665. As meaning the oldest is about 537 years old. Now, if you, you didn't go to the building, but it's a building history there. If you, if you have gone there, you would have seen that. Before the castle was built by the English, the land changed hands, this land changed hands among several Europeans. Portuguese came this, to this place first, Portuguese. They came as far back 1555. They were trading gold and ivory. They stayed here for some time, then they abandoned the land. Then 1654, Swedish also came here because of gold. So while the Swiss were here, three years after, Danes attacked the Swedish. The Danes were here. So while the Danes were here, Dutch also attacked the Danes again. So while the Danes were defeated, they went to build the castle in Accra. So while Dutch thought they conquered everybody, 1664, British defeated them. So when the British built the castle, they knew other Europeans to come to fight with them. So they brought these cannons for defense. That was why they stayed here for a longer time. And nobody defeated because of the cannons. And they built their castles in bricks like this. This brick were brought from England. They brought them to balance their ships to Africa. When they were going, they used Africans as balance away. There was no cement then. So they used grounded sea shells, lime powder and palm oil as the binding material. And they built the castle on a rock. The foundation is huge rock. That is why for years the building is very, very strong. And when slavery started in Africa, as a matter of fact, Europeans alone couldn't have captured all the millions of Africans who passed through the dungeons. But that is also not to tell you that Africans sold their own people, just like they are telling us. And let me tell you that because Europeans needed Africans, they created a system on this continent of Africa that was very difficult for African chiefs to resist them. And to me, up to the 21st century, that system has not changed much. Mm. The system is still working. Mm. One, Europeans captured some of the Africans physically using guns. They worked with some Africans to capture other Africans. Mm -hmm. Some Africans called slave raiders, like armed robbers of now. Europeans supplied them guns, gave them tobacco, perfume, sardine, sugar, secondhand clothing, and their system of trading was butter. So these people who organized themselves into groups like us, they would go and raid villages. They would capture innocent people at gunpoint. They would bring them to the Europeans in exchange for foreign use. But the last one that brought more than 60% of the enslaved Africans was intertribal wars, ethnic conflicts. That is, that's where the problem is. And we have to understand clearly as an Africans that long before Europeans came to Africa in 1471, which was the Portuguese, they came first. Before they came, there was nothing like Ghana or Nigeria or Togo or Burkina Faso or Egypt. We had kingdoms, empires, African states, exactly, Songa Empire, Mali Empire, that kind of thing. For that matter, the African government themselves. So sometimes they fight over a boundary. 
they have to expand their territory. Sometimes they fight over a land they perceive to be rich of gold or diamond. But before the white men came, blacks who were here go to wars with weapons like bows and arrow. When you go to war with distance, after a long fight, one tribe will lose the war. The losers will be taken as domestic slips or indentured service or servitude. Those people, to a large extent, they had some amount of freedom. They could marry, raise free children. They could acquire property. Later, they were integrated into the family system. They were not kept in buildings like us. Mm -hmm. They were also not transported to Europe and America permanently. Mm -hmm. They were free people in society. And I believe that system of slavery has been with humans since time immemorial. Mm -hmm. In ancient Rome, mm -hmm. Egypt, that kind of thing. Let me give an example. In my country, Ghana, I can tell you on authority that not long ago, if you own somebody, who hasn't got that money to pay, you can allow your son your daughter, sometimes your wife, to go and work for the one you are owing for a number of years, you agree upon just to pay the debt. To the period of which you work, you are slaves. Mm -hmm. If you are working like that, and you are a woman, mm -hmm. and you are beautiful, with a good character, and somebody from the master's family should get married to you, automatically, you free yourself from the slave to be part of that family. Because there's no way I can enslave my wife. I don't think the brothers here can do the same. And there was a system whereby if you are working, uh, as a slave and you are a guy and you are hard working and loyal to your master the master can entrust his property into your hand so in case the master is dead you rise to be the head of the family mm -hmm. from zero to hero mm -hmm. so before Europeans came we had this system on the continent of Africa but when they came situation changed immediately they capitalized on our system mm -hmm. so they then introduced guns to the African chiefs just to intensify the tribal wars Gave them the mirror, the tobacco, champagne, those things. And they were to pay for distance, but the system was better. And they would tell the leaders that they need those guns to protect themselves, fight their other tribes, take their everything. The guns get to the chiefs. The only option available was to organize their people, use their guns against the other tribes. So whenever they fight, they lose it. Instead of them to become domestic slaves in their homes, as they were doing before. They would give them to the Europeans, and exchange for guns, exchange for mirror, sugar, tobacco, and other things. Yes, two questions. Yeah. You said they had that slave system, in, in a sense, in effect, before the Europeans. Exactly. That so, was more indentured service. Okay. Indentured servitude. Did they get that system from the Arabs before the Europeans? Oh, the Arab rather introduced no. something different. We had this system before the Arabs even came. We had that system existed with Africans before the Arabs even came with their trade. Where Mansa Musa, shall we give them some space? And you shall see what say. Anything about it? I don't want to tell So we had that system before the Arabs even came. You said Mansa Musa? Yes. Mansa Musa was a Muslim. Exactly. So I am saying we had that system before Mansa Musa. And his people came okay. before Amasa Musa and Jacob came. So we had this before they came. So when they came, their system was also quite different. They would capture the people, they would kill the men, they would impregnate the women, have children with them, they enslaved them, they take, took them to Europe and, and Saudi Arabia, those places. So we had that system before the Arabs even came. Was it like a seven year pro you know, like Israel, it's like a seven year and then you're free? Yes, uh, but yeah, but Work this seven one, years in the year. Did you uh, have a time period on it? We, uh, in Africa, in Africa it yeah. depends from tribe to tribe. Okay. And the type of debt you owe. Okay. If the debt is huge, yeah, the years will be more. Yeah, you work yeah, for yeah. a longer time. Right. If it's small, it will be just a shorter time. Mm -hmm. So it differs from place to place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you say that system is still today in mm -hmm. Africa. Mm -hmm. Not only really in keep, Africa, uh, not like in the world, globally. Oh, yes. What's keeping that system in place? Thank you. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> that system. You are joining the group. That's yeah. one step down here. Please, we are waiting for you, please. Okay. You'll be back. So on your way back, you can take the photo. Yeah, you're okay. Okay. You'll be coming yeah. out again. And we'll be in a minute. Yeah, we'll be coming out. So on your way, come yeah. in. Yeah. yeah, Daddy, watch your steps. Watch your steps. Wonderful. You're welcome. Back home. Great. I like that. You're back. Two steps in.
Now, <laughs> what is keeping that system in place is simple but complex. Simply because after slavery for 400 years. Can you speak louder? Thank you. I am saying that what is keeping that system in place is simple but complex, especially in regard to Africa. Simply because after slavery for 400 years, British and other Europeans colonized Africa. Mm -hmm. And because they wanted to control Africans forever, mm -hmm. they put a system in place that would never make Africans independent. Mm -hmm. So they can manipulate it, they can be, they'll be manipulating the African people forever. And that is a system. And that is why that, that system is still in place. For instance, education. The education that they introduced to African people. It is not helping us. And then the system is not making us independent. So we are still depending on them. Because if we talk about, let me take you back a bit. We talk about the abolition of slave trade. It wasn't like they loved the African people before they were abolished the trade. No. It was more economic. And that time also coincided with the Industrial Revolution, where what human beings were doing, they no longer needed them. And industries were then coming up in Europe, and they needed raw material to feed those industries. And they don't have them there. And so, so they don't have them. And so they said that, OK, why can't we stop the slave trade and then encourage the Africans to stay at home so that we will go and then colonize them, then teach them how to cultivate raw materials so that we'll go and buy for them to come and feed our industries. So they came from Europe. They went to Berlin Conference. And they created space again. Berlin Conference in the 1870s, thereabouts. They took the map of Africa. They divided it among themselves. They said, this is for British. This is for French, that kind of thing. So when they succeeded in doing that, and they said, OK, they are new, can you hear me? I should, I should pause it. And they said, their new colonies will not be recognized until they are present on the colony. So Europeans came from Europe to settle here. French and English, Dutch and other people. And when they succeeded in doing that, they said, OK, should they train their new colonies to become dependent or independent in Africa? And England and France, there was chaos. They argue, argue in their parliaments. And they concluded by saying that if they train their new colonies in Africa to become independent, they will suffer in Europe. <laughs> so they said, when they occupied the colonies in Africa, French, and the English, and the Dutch, and others, they said, okay, should they train their new colonies in Africa to become dependent or independent? And France and England, there was chaos. They argued argue in their parliament. And they concluded by saying that if they train their new colonies in Africa to become independent, they will suffer. They, say, train, they will suffer in Europe because they wouldn't get the raw materials from them as they wanted. So they should train Africans to become dependent on them. So they start down in Europe. They structured a system, a system that they think will achieve that. Education. Religion. Industrialization. Name them. They, they impose it on us. They said we should practice. And our people accepted it wholeheartedly. So we've been going to school in Africa. We have so many professors in Africa. But even toothpick, we import it. We have gold, we have cocoa, diamond, bauxite, oil, everything. They give us the price of our raw materials. They go and change the raw materials into finished goods. They give us price again. So when are we going to be independent? And the education that they introduce, the leaders who are leading us today, who lead us to effect a change, they themselves have gone through that educational system. And they are leading us. But who will bring the change? Mm -hmm. We will.
That is why we need you in the diaspora. That's why we need you in the diaspora to bring a different view, a different energy, so that we can effect a change. But without that, it'll be the same. It'll be the same. That is what Kwame, I'm coming. That's what Kwame Nkrumah first brought.